Um, shalom, shalom, Yasha Allah. This is Brother Yawana, Flaming Fire Israel. I want to start off first and foremost giving all honor and glory and praises unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Hamashiach, Womalaki Awasha, Rakatham. Shalom to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. It's going to be a quick um, video, interesting video that I've seen, and I felt like I need to do a video on it. And um, it goes into a lot of things in history of the so called African Americans, um, the Native Americans, uh, Hispanics. Um, and it's only a five minute long video. And I'm going to just, you know, pause here and there. Might bring out a couple of scriptures. Um, and um, basically, I just want to uh, expound on the video. So we're going to go ahead and start it now um, through the Spirit. <laughs> Slavery, the treatment of human beings as property, deprived of personal rights, has occurred in many forms throughout the world. But one institution stands out for both its global scale and its lasting legacy. The Atlantic slave trade occurred... Right, so let's pause there. Okay, so the Lord said... The, the Lord told us in Daniel 9 and 12, like a lot of people, they come up to us and, you know, um, they say, well, other people went into slavery. And he just said himself that nothing matches up to the slavery that the Israelites went through. Nothing matches up to what the Israelites went through in our slavery. Um, so let's get um, a quick precept in Daniel, the ninth chapter. Um, so there's been other slaveries, but there's no slavery that was just globally, that was on this scale. Because there's never been anyone to have went through what Jacob has went through. Let's go to Daniel chapter 9, verse 12. And he have confirmed his words. And he have confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven have not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. Right? So nothing's been done like it's been done unto us, man. There's been other slaveries, but there's not been another slavery like it was like ours. All right, in the more numerous slaveries, a lot of people think the Atlantic slave trade is the only slavery we went through. We went through more, numerous captivities: the Babylonian captivity, all right, the Assyrian captivity, all right. We've been through multiple captivities, man. Um, the um, we've been under a captivity under the Arabs. Um, it's been nu numerous captivities we went we went into. But no one's been until what no one's been through what we went through. No one's went through a great evil like us. So you know you got a lot of uh, you know these Edomites out here that try to justify themselves and say, well, other people have went into slavery too. Well, this is not this is not even on the same level as what the so-called Black Hispanics and Native Americans have went through as a a people collectively. All right, and just dealing with slaveries, no one's went through a slavery. Like the we went through in the Atlantic slave trade, all right. From the late 15th to the mid 19th century, and spanning three continents, forcibly brought more than 10 million Africans to the Americas. The impact it would leave affected not only these slaves and their descendants, but the economies and histories of large parts of the world. Hey, hold up, I want to go back to that real quick when it started, Slovakia. To the Americas. The impact it would leave affected not only these slaves and their descendants, but the economies and histories of like lasting legacy. The Atlantic slave trade, occurring from the late 15th to the mid 19th century and spanning three continents, forced. So even he said that the slavery started at the late 15th centuries. All right, there's some accounts that it started even earlier than that. All right. So, you know, a lot of people, they say the 400-year captivity was up this year. And then they really don't know the history like that. They think we really went in this, that slavery started um, exactly when they, uh, your history book told you. When he's going to tell you that it, it started way earlier than that, late 15th centuries. All right? Even some accounts earlier than that. All right? So the 400 years would have been up in, 19, in the 1900s. All right? So that goes in to show you a lot of people, they took their scripture in Genesis that's talking about the captivity of us in Egypt, and they run with it. All right, when really that's talking about the Egyptian captivity. And we were in captivity under Egypt because it says we would leave with great substance. When we see that we're not going to be leaving with great substance, 
in this captivity. We're gonna bear the the righteous are scarcely gonna be saved. You're not gonna be able to take the things you have and leave with a great substance in this captivity. All right. So let's go ahead. Keep it going. He brought more than 10 million Africans to the Americas. The impact it would leave affected not only these slaves and their descendants, but the economies and histories of large parts of the world. There had been centuries of contact between Europe and Africa via the Mediterranean, but the Atlantic slave trade began in the late 1400s with Portuguese colonies in West Africa and Spanish settlement of the Americas. So he even said it really started in the late 1400s. So that's even make messing up their 400 year philosophy even more. All right. Shortly after, the crops grown in the new colonies, sugarcane, tobacco, and cotton, were labor intensive, and there were not enough settlers or indentured servants to cultivate all the new land. American natives were enslaved, mm. but many died from whoa. new diseases. Whoa, 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 whoa. So you, 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 you Israelites out there that say the Hispanics, the Native Americans are not Israelites, you're confounded. That say they don't meet these curses in Deuteronomy 28th chapter, you're confounded. Let's run that back again. Natives were enslaved, but many died. Hold up to cultivate all the new land. American natives were enslaved. American natives were enslaved. Who are the American natives? The Israelites that were here in America before the so-called white man even showed up. They were enslaved also, okay? So you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free, all right? Many died from new diseases while others effectively resisted. And so to meet the massive demand for labor, the Europeans looked to Africa. African slavery had existed for centuries in various forms. Some slaves were indentured servants with a limited term and the chance to buy one's freedom. Others were more like European serfs. In some societies, slaves could be part of a master's family, own land, and even rise to positions of power. But when white captains came offering manufactured goods, weapons, and rum for slaves, African kings and merchants had little reason to hesitate. They viewed the people they sold not as fellow Africans. Whoa, 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 whoa. These Africans viewed the people they sold not as fellow Africans. All right, and I was just watching a video. You got this, uh, the Israelites out here that is called the Year of Return, where our people are, are returning to Ghana and going to Ghana and going to where they was sold into slavery. And the people not really dealing with them like that because they know they ain't their people, man. All right. So we're the Israelites of the Bible. These these Africans knew we weren't Israelites. I mean, these Africans knew we were Israelites. Salaki, they knew we weren't Africans. All right, we they knew we weren't of their tribes. And look how they describe us. Look how he how he breaks it down. But criminals, debtors, mm. or prisoners of war from rival tribes. Ooh, so what it, what it is is people that weren't of their people. They try to cover it up and try to make it seem like it was prisoners and. And, and, and things like that, but he even it comes out at the end a rival tribe, rival people, people that wouldn't are their people, right? So you're saying that the Israelites after 70 A.D. that we fled into Africa, even a little bit further after 70 A.D. All right, our people fled into Africa, man. All right, Western Africa, where we lived there until we were sold into slavery on ships. Now, like he was just telling you earlier, that the so-called white man came to the to the Africans, these Hamites, and you know, these there's other um people in Africa too. Um and they uh and they and they came to us with and they were uh they had uh rum and different things that these Africans wanted and all they had to do was sell some people they didn't like. All they had to do was sell these people that were greater than them. These people that were a better people than them. Alright? And let's get this Psalms eighty three and I'm not gonna break it all out. Um Brothers can bring that out or read the whole thing if they want to. Um, this is Psalms 83 and 2. It says, so man, a little bit. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up thy head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and have con consulted against thy hidden ones. So they took crafty counsel again against us, man. All right. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. How did they say, come and let us cut them off from being a nation? Putting us all together as Africans, all right? Just making us as everyone else. 
are having this year of return, having uh, Israelites return to Africa's Africa, where they not even they not even being accepted there, man. All right, okay. So we gotta understand these things. They've they've took in crafted counsel against us, man. All right, they took these DNA uh, uh DNA tests and made you think you was an African. All right. Even though they say the DNA test cannot be used and, and, and it shouldn't be used for anything definitive. All right. Verse five. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Right. So. Look, they took it, they confederate against us, and it tells you the nations. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites, all right, of Moab. So these, the white man, the so-called white man, the Arabs, all right, the Chinese man, the Hagarines, Gabal, and Ammon, and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, all right. So these so-called Africans also, man, all right, they all took and crafty counsel against us, man, all right, and that's what you have to understand. They knew we were the Israelites. They knew we weren't as they knew we weren't uh Africans here, man. Alright? And that's what you see here. Alright, so let's go back to the video. By selling them, kings enriched their own realms and strengthened them against neighboring enemies. Right, so by selling these Israelites, these Africans, they got rich off of this, man. They all had a partaker in this. The Jewish man had a partaker in this. Alright. All these other nations had a partaker in this. The Arabs, they all, they all took, they all made a fortune off of this crafty council they took upon the Israelites. All right. African kingdoms prospered from the slave trade, but meeting the Europeans' massive demand created intense competition. Slavery replaced other criminal sentences, and capturing slaves became a motivation for war. Right. Rather than and they were, and they were capturing Israelites, man. All right. That's what they were doing. They weren't selling their own people. They weren't selling their own brothers and sisters. All right. They were selling these Israelites, which came over into a land that was uh was uh not their homeland. All right, not their place. All right, and they got sold. It's a result. To defend themselves from slave raids, neighboring kingdoms needed European firearms, which they also bought with slaves. The slave trade had become an arms race, altering societies and economies across the continent. As for the slaves themselves, they faced unimaginable brutality. After being marched to slave forts on the coast, shaved to prevent lice, and branded, they were loaded onto ships bound for the Americas. About 20% of them would never see land again. Most captains of the- Oh, let's, let's, let's get a precept. And really, we would never see our land again, okay? We would never see our home again. And that's just through the spirit that these devils, you know, he messing up some of his stuff he's going off on, but some of the stuff he's, you know, he's bringing things out. You got to take the the, um, the sugar with the salt, all right? It's Deuteronomy 28, 68, all right? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again, slavery, Bondage again. You read that in Deuteronomy 6, verse 12. It shows you that Egypt is the house of bondage. With ships. All right, so we're going to go into slavery again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. We're not going to see our homeland anymore again. We're not going to see how we reign over these nations anymore again. We're not going to see how we were this, more, this powerful and great people anymore again. All right? We're not going to see our homeland, Israel, anymore again. And there you should be sold unto your enemies. For bond man and bond woman, and no man shall buy you. Slave man and slave one and slave woman, and no one shall save you. No one shall redeem you from this man. No man is gonna be able to get you out of this. So when you go into this man, you see that look, this is talking about one people, all right? And you know you got a lot of people say this was this has already been for, for, for uh this didn't happen to us. This was a time uh, a later time, but you see Jeremiah is still talking about the same thing. All right, and I'm going to do a lesson on Jeremiah, the Jeremiah chapter later on that day also, on that specific Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter, all right? And you see all these other prophets um, um, still saying that we're, we're going, going to the slave, all right? That all these prophecies are coming to pass, all right? So let's go back to this video. Or tight packers, cramming as many men as possible below deck. 
while the lack of sanitation caused many to die of disease, and others were thrown overboard for being sick or as discipline. The captains ensured their profits by cutting off slaves' ears as proof of purchase. Mm -mm -mm. Some captives took matters into their own hands. Many inland Africans had never seen whites before and thought them to be cannibals, constantly taking people away and returning for more. Afraid of being eaten or just to avoid... Right, the ancient nation, man. The ancient nation. The, 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 the scriptures say an ancient nation shall come against you, man. All right? Eat them. All right? Cavemen. Cannibals. This is what they were known for. All right? I'm going to keep playing it. Further suffering, they committed suicide or starved themselves, believing that in death, their souls would return home. Mm. Nope. And who are they talking about? They was talking about Israel. They was talking about in death, they will re return to what? Waiting on the resurrection, man. All right? That's what they were waiting on. Why? Because they were Israelites. All right? You don't see no no damn uh, uh, any of these, um, these Africans, these Hamites thinking that. All right? And a lot of brothers, they get twisted that this Israelites, they still left over in Africa. All right? A lot of brothers, they get, a lot of brothers, they paint Africa as just the land of all Hamites. When it's just not true, man. There's multiple different ancient nations that are in Africa. All right? Including still some Israelites that are still in Africa. All right? Didn't the Lord say that we shall be scattered among all people from one end of the earth even unto the other? All right? Who survived were completely dehumanized, treated as mere cargo. Women and children were kept above deck and abused by the crew, while the men were made to perform dances in order to keep them extra. Right, so look, let's get that. Deuteronomy um 28 also. Right, so the you know the the men the 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 women and the children, they was, you know, they was getting messed up, man. Let's get the priest up. Deuteronomy 28 and 50 and it reads a nation of fierce countenance which shall not regard the person of thy old of the old nor show favor to the young they were of a fierce countenance they didn't care all right all right this ancient nation that the Edomites all right we're gonna come against the Israelites all right that's why you see all these prophecies of them getting paid back for what they have done all right, because the Lord has remembered all things. All right. ...and curb rebellion. What happened to those Africans who reached the New World and how the legacy of slavery still affects their descendants today? And we're not is Africans. All right. We're not Af Africans. We're Israelites. All right. From Israel. We're the two biblical Israelites. All right. Not those ones that came over in, in the 1900s and tried to play the part. All right, that's inferior. Don't meet any of the scriptures that that uh, took place, right? And we read in Revelation two and nine, Revelation three and nine that they have a judgment coming for them from what they have done, and they are the synagogue of Satan. Really well known, but what is not often discussed is the effect that the Atlantic slave trade had on Africa's future. Not only did the continent lose tens of millions of its able-bodied population, and look, and look, and this is where it starts going off. All right. Africa, they, they just said they got rich off of it. Now, all of a sudden, they're struggling off of it. No. All right? They lost people that weren't in their people. That's why they sold them. All right? So, you know, like I said, you got to take it, some things with a grain of salt here. You know, he, he, do got, he, he still got to cover himself up, all right, to match with the history books. Most of the slaves taken were men. The long-term demographic effect was even greater. When the slave trade was finally outlawed in the Americas and Europe, the African kingdoms whose economies it had come to dominate collapsed, leaving them open to conquest and colonization. And, the, it, and they was just getting collapsed, man. They, they, the Most High had that judgment on them. All right? They, look, they weren't, uh, they weren't Israelites here. They weren't Israelites that were collapsed. There were Israelites left over. All right? But you got to understand, man, these nations, they, they sold these Israelites dealing with the white man, and then the white man came to, to mess them up afterwards, man. All right? 
these these Hamites had a, the Lord set that up that way that they had to pay for what they done. All right. So you know that they you know they try to put us in there. All right, where it's not where we were the Israelites. All right, and there were some Israelites left over in Africa. Don't get me wrong. All right. And the increased competition and influx of European weapons fueled warfare and instability that continues to this day. The Atlantic slave trade also contributed to the development of racist ideology. Most African slavery had no deeper reason than legal punishment or intertribal warfare. But the Europeans who preached a universal religion and who had long ago outlawed enslaving fellow Christians needed justification for a practice so obviously at odds with their ideals of equality. So they claimed that Africans were biologically inferior and destined <laughs> to be slaves, making great efforts to justify. Then we say craft the council. All right. Then we tell you that this is craft the council, man. They knew they knew who we are, man. They got us Hebos and Hebrews. That's what they used to call us. They knew we were the Hebrews, man. All right, the Africans knew that we weren't their people. This theory. Thus, slavery in Europe and the Americas acquired a racial basis, making it impossible for slaves and their future descendants to attain equal status in society. In all of these ways, right? The and what the Lord say? He says we shall we sh uh, we shall be on uh, very low, and the enemies they should be on be on very high. All right, that's what the scriptures say. All right, so that's what it, that's what the, the scriptures validate everything that was here. Why? Because we are the Israelites. All right. The Spanish and Native Americans went into slavery too. We see that in the beginning. All right. Slave trade was an injustice on a massive scale, whose impact has continued long after its abolition. All right. So look, that's it on that. Um, you know, we are the true Israelites, man. The so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We are the ones that went through this curse, these curses in Deuteronomy 28 chapter. All right. We are the ones that. Uh, that, that meet these prophecies, man. All right? We're not Africans. For all our brothers and sisters trying to return, trying to go to um, Ghana and trying to, the year to return, trying to go to Africa, man. Look, man, you're not an African, man. All right? You're an Israelite. All right? So let's go to John 8 and 32. And when we end off with this, like I said, I didn't even want to make this video too long. We've got like 30, 20, 25 minutes now, so. We'll go ahead and cut it off after this. But it says this, John 8 and 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. All right? And you Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you need to find out the truth, man. All right? And this truth shall make you free. All right? The truth, which is, is which is in Yahweh Shah, all right? And the truth, which is in this book, this word, the embodiment, the, the word which... Yahweh Shah is the embodiment of his word. But this word shows you who you are. All right? These scriptures show you who you are. All right? You're not an African. You're not a Hispanic. You're not a Native American. All right? So knowing these things you got, you know now, it's high time for you to wake up out of your sleep. And with that, uh, Brother Yahweh Nam from the Flame and Fire of Israel, I want to end off giving all undergoing praises to Yahweh by Shem HaMashiach. Woman like Yahweh Shah, Barack a thumb, Shalom to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Hopefully this video was edifying to the flock. Um, any questions, you know your brothers and sisters can always hit the email at flamingfireisrael at gmail.com. Um, like I said, once again, Shalom to next time, Lord willing. Um, and Shalom Yasha'Allah and Kwam Yasha'Allah.